Let's discuss the differences between the heating curve and the cooling curve. The heating curve of a substance shows the changes in temperature of the substance during a time period when heating occurs. So we are adding heat or energy to a substance. In this curve, we're starting out at the solid phase, we're adding heat, we're adding energy, and we are recording the temperature change over time. So this axis over here below is heat absorbed or time, because as time goes on, heat is being absorbed and we are measuring temperature. If we ever ask you to draw the curve or draw the graph, it's important to remember your heading, your axis labels and units. Right, so let's take a look at how the heating curve for substance X looks like. Okay, so we're going to start off with the substance in its solid phase. It doesn't matter what the substance is, we're calling it substance X. And we're starting off by measuring the temperature of the solid. And what we do is we add heat or energy to the substance. It is heating that solid up. So it starts off as a cold solid and then it gets warmer, 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 very, very hot solid. And then as you should know, so if I start with an ice block, for example, if we pretend that this is water that we're dealing with, which it's not, um, but let's just pretend, then eventually if we have a solid ice block and we add heat to it, eventually that solid is going to melt. It will go through a phase change, which is called melting. So the next part of the graph will look as follows. Can you see that the graph is now flat? It's horizontal. When it's flat or horizontal like this, the substance is going through a phase change. It is changing its state. It's going from a solid. It was a solid in this initial inclined phase over here. And it's changing. It's busy changing into a liquid. So when you see a flat part of the graph now, you know that that is a phase change. It corresponds to a phase change. And the states that are present during the phase change would be both solid and liquid phase. The solid and the liquid phase are both present at the same time because the substance doesn't change instantaneously into a liquid. It takes place over a period of time. This is the phase change over here. It is called melting. So the, so the solid is melting and turning into a liquid. And we'll discuss the energy changes that takes place in these various parts of the graph afterwards. But then what we're going to do is we're going to continue now it's melted completely. And obviously after it's melted, it's completely formed a liquid. It's in its liquid phase. And the liquid phase of the graph will look something like this. Notice how when it is in a singular state, so either just a solid or just a liquid or just a gas, we've got an inclined line going over here. Temperature is increasing. So at this point over here, We've got a colder liquid, then we carry on adding heat, heat is being absorbed, we get a warmer liquid, and then we get a hot liquid. And as you should know, eventually, when we've added enough heat energy to a liquid, it will reach its boiling point. Boiling or evaporation will occur. Another phase change, and remember what we said about phase changes, the graph will be horizontal. So this is when boiling or evaporation is occurring. The substance is changing from a liquid to a gas. So both liquid and gas phases are present at this stage, liquid and gas. Then after it has gone through its phase change, it becomes just solely a gas. And we can continue heating that gas up. So we get a cold gas, a warmer gas, and a hot gas. Okay, so this was boiling or evaporation. So a few important things to note about the graph is we are continuously adding heat energy. If you look at this axis over here, time is going on, heat is being absorbed continuously by the substance. However, just because heat is being absorbed does not mean temperature is always increasing. When we think of heat absorbed, you need to think of energy. So energy is always being taken up by my substance. My substance, whatever it is, is always absorbing that energy. It's always absorbing that heat. However, only at certain points in time is the temperature of the substance actually increasing. So it increases here when it's in its solid phase, then temperature stays constant. Then temperature increases again when it's in its liquid phase, and then temperature stays constant. And then temperature increases again when it's in its gaseous phase. Now, why is this happening? What happens is when a substance is in one phase, like just a solid or liquid or gas, when we add heat to it, what happens over here is the kinetic energy, the kinetic energy of the substance is busy increasing. And as you should know, 
if I increase kinetic energy, I'm increasing average kinetic energy, and that is a measure of the temperature of a substance. The temperature of a substance is determined by the substance's average kinetic energy. The particles begin moving faster and faster as the temperature increases. However, the substance is still in one phase. It's still just in the solid phase, yeah, initially. So nothing is happening to the potential energy. Okay, the particles aren't moving further apart from each other. There isn't a phase change taking place. And that is the case. So kinetic energy increasing, which causes temperature to increase, that happens in all of the inclined parts of the graph. So kinetic energy increases, average kinetic energy of the particles increase. And that is why the temperature increases. So the heat energy that I'm adding, the heat that is being absorbed for the inclined parts of the graph, it is causing this change to happen. However, when we reach the flat parts of the graph, such as this part over here and this part over here, we are still absorbing heat energy. So heat energy is still being absorbed for this time period. However, it's not causing the kinetic energy of the particles to increase. So the kinetic energy stays the same. It doesn't change. Kinetic energy stays the same. Therefore, average kinetic energy stays the same, which means the temperature doesn't increase. And you can see that if you read temperature of the graph for this entire time period, the temperature stays constant. Let's pretend it's 30 degrees Celsius or whatever it is. It stays 30 degrees Celsius from here all the way to here. But we added heat energy. So something must happen. And the thing that happens is that potential energy now increases. And what that does is it allows the substance's intermolecular forces to be overcome. The intermolecular forces are the forces that exist between the particles. So we absorb heat energy, we overcome the intermolecular forces, we weaken them. It allows the particles to move further apart and that causes the phase change. So it's basically like that heat energy is not actually going towards increasing the temperature, it's not going towards increasing the kinetic energy, Rather, it's going to increasing the potential energy, causing a phase change. So only one of the two energies will change at one time. Here's another visual representation of a heating curve. And here is an explanation about what happens on the inclined parts of the graph. As we mentioned, we're changing the average kinetic energy, which is increasing the temperature. And here's an explanation of what happens on the flat parts of the graph. No kinetic energy is changing. Temperature doesn't change but there's a phase change and the potential energy will change. The cooling curve is essentially the opposite of the heating curve. So you obviously need to watch the video on the heating curve first in order to understand the cooling curve, but it's basically the reverse. So think of the heating curve as we start with the solid, we add heat, we end up with the gas. The cooling curve, we start with the gas, we remove heat or heat is released to the environment. Start with the gas, end with the solid. So this is basically how the cooling curve would look. Yeah, we start off with gas at a certain temperature. Heat is being released to the environment. We're cooling the gas. Heat is being removed. Eventually, we're going to condense that gas into a liquid. It's going to go from gas phase to liquid phase. There we go. So at this temperature over here, whatever that temperature is on the graph, that will be the temperature at which condensation occurs. So condensation is our phase change. We go from gas to liquid. Then we've got our liquid phase and we start off with what we can call a hot liquid. And then as heat is released, as time goes on, remember this axis is time. Time is passing, heat is being released to the environment or we're removing heat and the temperature of the liquid decreases. So hot liquid, warm liquid, cold liquid. Eventually, if we cool down that liquid enough, if enough heat is released, it'll, re it'll reach its freezing point. Think about when we put water in a tray in our freezer and the water, the liquid water, eventually turns into ice cubes. So this temperature over here, whatever that is, when we read that off, that temperature would be the freezing point of my substance X. Then Remember, when phase changes are occurring, we have both phases present. Then after our phase changes happen, we've gone from liquid to solid. Our graph ends up looking like that. So hot, solid, warm, solid, cold, cold, colder, solid, colder, solid. And just like with our heating curve, when we have an inclined part of the graph, kinetic energy is changing. 
average kinetic energy of the particles are changing. The particles are slowing down in this case. That's why kinetic energy is changing and therefore temperature decreases. So that's all the inclined parts when there's a single phase. The horizontal parts over here, kinetic energy is constant, but potential energy is decreasing. The particles are moving closer together, phase changes are happening, and the intermolecular forces are actually getting a bit stronger. And here is another representation of a cooling curve. And remember, you need to know how to interpret the curve, how to draw it. Also, you need to, need, you need to know how to read values off of the curves. I hope this video has been helpful. Please subscribe for more chemistry, physics, and maths videos. I can't wait to see you in another video very soon. Check out links in the description box for more. Bye, everyone.